Hi, and welcome to part seven of my Cisco software defined access um, using zero touch um, demo. Uh, my name is Roddy Hassan. I'm a technical solutions architect at Cisco Systems. Uh, in this video, we're going to cover uh, multi site. So, multi site is, uh, is now called Cisco software defined access for distributed campus. Um, but it's known as multi site as well. Multi site was the original name for it. And it, it, it's a big topic. It can definitely be a topic on its own. It's something you want to have a, a deep architecture discussion with your, uh, uh, with your Cisco rep or, or expert about uh, as far as where it applies, how to apply it, and what it's for. Um, <clears throat> and in, in our case, we're just, I'm just going to show you a very, very simple de demo of it, a simple topology demo. But essentially what multi-site is, um, is if you've got multiple fabric sites so a fabric site would be something that is self-sufficient and it could survive on its own uh, it would have its own border its own control plane even if it got cut off from the rest of the world or from the internet it would still function and local traffic would still flow um, and what multi-site allows you to do is connect multiple fabric sites together so that you can maintain end-to-end -end segmentation and policy so again, if we had two sites, and this is our topology diagram here, and we've got our San Jose site over here, and we've got our San Francisco site right here, which is our fabric in a box, um, and which is we're going to add that during the demo. Uh, what what will happen is we're going to use this uh, transit control plane to you to do multi-site now. Remember, this is fabric in a box. It, can, it is also a control plane and a border. So I could actually have a different connection here, an IP transit to the fusion or to an, another fusion or to its own internet connection, and traffic would still follow that path. But traffic between fabric sites would follow the, uh, the control plane path, and any policy would be applied end-to-end. -end. Segmentation would be end-to-end -end as well. So that's essentially what... Um, Cisco software defined access for distributed campuses. Uh, again, my use case is very simple just for this demo. I don't have an extra path out of this fabric in a box. So all of my traffic is going to traverse the uh, multi-site path and go out the border that's in San Jose. But again, in a pr production network, in a real network, it would be a little bit uh, more complex uh, to the uh, for your uses here. So um, how do we how do we enable multi-site? Well, first we gotta log back into DNA Center because we timed out. But uh, it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Uh, if you remember when I um, created the IP transit earlier in, in an earlier video to, to show how to uh, automate our path out to the Fusion router, uh, we go back into the same section. So we just go to provision and we go to fabric. And if you remember these boxes, I created the Bay, Bay, Area, Bay Area transit and our Bay Area fabric. So we're gonna do a few things. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add our SD access transit. And an SD access transit, as I mentioned before, is the type of transit you use when you're going to do multi-site. So here we're just going to call this San Francisco transit and it's type uh, SD access transit. Now we need to pick a transit control plane. So a transit control plane is a special type of control plane in SD access that is specific to multi-site and the transit control plane actually keeps track of all networks across all fabrics in a multi-site network so it will keep track of all host locations in the san francisco fabric in a box as well as the uh, networks in the san jose uh, fabric and if i added other fabrics to this site uh, to this transit uh, it would keep track of all of them so that's what a, a, a transit control plane is it is required for multi-site so we're just going to pick our location for our transit control plane i know that it's in san francisco building one floor two i'll uh, just pull this down we pick sp or sf transit cp which was the device that we onboarded with uh, LAN automation earlier and we click save that creates our uh, transit control plane. So now DNA Center is going to go out to that transit control plane and configure the uh, parameters required for multi-site. So the next thing we need to do is actually add uh, San Francisco as a fabric site to our fabric domain. So our fabric domain is called Bay Area Fabric. We have a fabric site in San Jose that we created and, and went through the workflow and tested earlier. And we're just going to add San Francisco to this fabric domain. So San Francisco will be its own fabric site. So I just click the plus sign, click on San Francisco and click next. And I'm going to pick our VN. So we're going to use our standard uh, campus guest and infra VN uh, for this network. So again, end-to-end -end segmentation, end-to-end -end policy. So we're going to have our VNs end-to-end, -end, campus VN, guest VN, uh, infra VN. 
will be uh, end to end across the fabric domain. So we go ahead and click finish. And again, it, there's a there's plenty of documentation on um, Cisco software to find access for distributed campus out there. I, I can't cover it too in depth, otherwise this video will be hours long. And they're just giving you an idea of, uh, of how this works. So I've created our fabric site. So now we actually have two fabric sites, one in San Francisco, one in San Jose. Uh, if we go ahead and click the San Francisco site, we see our devices that are provisioned to San Francisco. So here we've got our transit control plane. It's already marked with a T for transit control plane. So that device is good. It's done. It's on its own. And then our other device in San Francisco is our fabric in a box. So uh, there's a couple of steps now. We still need to, to um, tell the borders at each site about the transit, about the SD access transit uh, so that they'll communicate and advertise their routes to the transit control plane. So we'll do that in San Jose first just to get it over with. Then we can come back here and build our fabric. So we'll go to San Jose and we're going to click our um, our uh, CP border one device, which is our border for our San Jose fabric. Um, go ahead and click that, hit configure. So this was the dialogue that we had earlier when we did border automation. Remember we added this Bay Area transit, which was our IP transit. But now I'm just gonna kind of collapse that just to get out of the way. I'm gonna add our new transit that we created, our SDA transit or our San Francisco transit. Just go ahead and click that. Scroll down, the only parameters we really need to enable is that this site provides internet access to all other sites through SDA Transit. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'd mentioned this is a very simple topology. So uh, our fabric in a box device in San Francisco doesn't have its, its own internet connection. So I'm saying that I want to use the SDA Transit for all traffic, not just traffic between the fabrics. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, please you know, tweet at me and ask me what I meant by this. But uh, this is essentially telling the uh, the San Francisco or the San Jose border that it's going to be the default path out for other sites, even if they're not in San, San Jose. So if we hover over that, we can see select this border to advertise internet services. So the internet by internet services, we mean the default route essentially. So we're going to head and check that, click add. And now our, um, our San Jose site site is configured. It's actually going to set up a connection to the San Francisco transit control plane, and it's going to advertise its routes, including the default route, because we checked that box. Okay, and we just go ahead and click add and deploy. Um, DNA Center will do its magic in the background. It's going to deploy those configurations. It's going to actually going to create a BGP uh, VPN v4 connection between the transit control plane and the border, so that it can advertise all the routes across all VNs. Okay. <coughs> The one big difference, obviously, is when I was talking about IP transit to the Fusion, uh, those BGP connections are individual peers across VRFs. With transit control plane right now, it's actually one uh, VPN v4 uh, BGP connection that tags the VNs or tags the VRFs in the advertisements. Um, so now we can go jump back to San Francisco. We've got our site. We've got our transit control plane. And now we've got our fabric in a box. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is actually create our uh, or assign our fabric roles in San Francisco uh, and then connect it to the San Francisco transit. So I'm going to show you two things here. Um, and uh, the first is fabric in a box. Um, and uh, that's again, very simple. What fabric in a box is, is it allows you to run all uh, Cisco software to find access roles on a single device, including wireless. So we just click the, the fabric in a box device here. Uh, we go ahead and we want to enable it to be an edge node, which is one of the roles. We want to enable it to be a control plane, which is another one of these roles. This error means I haven't enabled border yet, but it'll go away as soon as I enable border. And we want to make it a border as well. So once I click the border, it's going to come up and it's going to give me this dialog box. It's very familiar to the old one, uh, to the when I created the border in San Jose. I'm going to give it a BGP ASN. Again, we're going to use 65534. Uh, that was our fabric BGP AS that we selected in San Jose. So, um, and then these parameters are very similar. Again, this is gonna be the default border in the, San, in the San Francisco site. There is only one device. There's only gonna be one default border. And just like we did in San Jose, we're gonna add the SDA transit. Uh, so again, this will facilitate the connection to the transit control plane and allow end-to-end -end connectivity between the San Jose and the San Francisco transits, uh, it's fabrics. So I'm not going to check this box in San Francisco. So obviously, San Francisco doesn't have a dedicated internet connection or a separate internet connection. So we don't want traffic coming to San Francisco that needs to go elsewhere. Uh, this box was the one that I checked for San Jose. I'm going to leave it unchecked for San Francisco. 
I'm gonna go ahead and click add. And then the last thing we're gonna enable on this fabric in a box is embedded wireless. So embedded wireless is, uh, enables the WLC on a Catalyst 9300 uh, so that access points in that site will use the switch as the WLC rather than reaching out to a dedicated WLC that's outside of the fabric. So again, it's simple as enabling it, uh, picking which sites. If you remember when we assigned the WLC, we had to tell it which sites to manage or which APs to manage. I wanna manage APs in San Francisco everywhere. Uh, go ahead and click next. Uh, again, just some wireless parameters about rolling AP upgrades. Now we can see here, we've enabled this for embedded wireless and it's actually going to push the SSIDs that we've already created, our dev guest and our dev campus would be down here somewhere. Uh, there it is, dev campus and dev guest. So the SSIDs are now going to be pushed to our fabric in a box and that Catalyst 9300 will be act as a WLC as well as an edge node, as well as a border, as well as a control plane. So that's fabric in a box essentially. Um, to do uh, embedded wireless, you actually need a sub package and that's available uh, on cisco.com. Uh, but again, that's very documented. It's well documented elsewhere, uh, but I've already got it installed just, uh, just for your information. Let's so go ahead and click add and deploy. Now we see here the icon, uh, we've got a C for control plane, B for border, E for edge node, and a W for wireless or WLC. That's fabric in a box essentially, okay? So we've done two things here. We've uh, enabled fabric in a box and we've added the, our SDA transit for multi-site. Go ahead and click deploy. Everything will be pushed. Now, uh, the next thing we have to do again, just the way, same way we did it in San Jose, is we have to go through our host onboarding uh, workflow, which was uh, very similar to uh, what we did in San Jose, which is where we're gonna pick uh, a default authentication profile. We're going to assign pools to the VNs, uh, enable them for wireless, etc. So we're gonna go ahead and do that next. So as before, we're just gonna jump into host onboarding here. So again, remember we're in our San Francisco site, right? We, we're not in San Jose. So we do have to set these parameters again and they can be different for each fabric site, obviously. Um, so we're gonna pick closed authentication. We're gonna use the same type of authentication we were using earlier. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and deploy that. Uh, the next step is to assign our IP pools to our virtual networks in San Francisco. Since San Francisco is a different fabric site, uh, we're gonna have San Francisco specific IP pools, right? There's, that's pretty standard. <clears throat> um, there are ways you can share common pools across fabric sites, but I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, and that is something that's still kind of ongoing as far as development is concerned. So we're gonna go ahead and add our campus uh, pool first. Uh, I'll go ahead and pick San Francisco campus pool, uh, select data traffic, and enable it for wireless. So remember this VLAN name uh, I'm using in my ICE policies campus. So I'm just gonna shorten it to campus and go ahead and click add and deploy. And I'm gonna do the same thing now for the guest virtual network and for the infra VN. So I'll, uh, I'll leave the video going while I do that again, it, just to kind of give you some repetition, give you an idea of what the flow is. Uh, so we go back into guest, uh, we're gonna click add. Again, there are other parameters I'm not gonna mess with. They're, you know, a little too advanced for this video and, and I'm already way over time that I expected, so I don't wanna get too deep into everything. Uh, go ahead and pick our guest pool. We change our VLAN name to guest, select it for data, check wireless, yes, deploy. And again, <coughs> Cisco DNA Center is actually going to Fabric in a Box and creating the pools and the SVIs for these VLANs, for these campus campus pool and the guest pool. So it's actually going ahead and right now and configuring fabric in a box while I'm doing this clicking stuff. So uh, in for VN, again, we're gonna have wireless here. So we wanna add a, an infra VN pool for our access points. So we're gonna pick our San Francisco access point pool. Pool type will be for APs. And this VLAN name in ICE is um, AP VLAN. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. And click add and apply. So that, uh, that assigns our IP pools to our virtual networks. Um, the very last thing we need to do uh, from, in, at least in host onboarding, is to go to wireless ID, uh, SSIDs. And same as we did before, we need to assign pools to the SSIDs. So for campus, we're gonna pick campus. And for guest, we're going to pick guest. So these, this setting here, I mentioned it when I went through the San Jose flow. If I wanted, if I was running extended node, uh, extended node is a, a special kind of node in Cisco software and defined access. 
uh, all hosts on an extended node get assigned an SGT via the VLAN that they're in rather than via ICE. Uh, because extended nodes are generally less capable from a feature perspective. So I would assign a default SGT to VLAN mapping here uh, so that that would, uh, that would work from an extended node. But I'm not running extended node in this setup, so I don't need to do that. Uh, go ahead and click deploy and apply. Uh, this is going to push these pools to our fabric in a box, but to the wireless section of the fabric in a box. So remember, a fabric in a box is doing wired hosts, wireless, control plane, and border. So we have configurations for both wired and wireless. So that's deployed. Uh, and, uh, I'm going to end the video here and then uh, hopefully record just one more so that we can go ahead and provision our access point and do our client testing and a little bit of policy, and then we'll wrap it all up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.